Hi, I'm Aaron. We're going to be talking about rotating assemblies in this show. What is the rotating assembly? That's basically everything inside the motor that rotates. The crank, the rods, pistons, rings, bearings, harmonic balancer, flywheel, all the stuff that's involved in that. You know, a lot of people can build an engine. and It's really not about whether you can build an engine or not build an engine. The trick is knowing which components to choose for the right job. For instance, we're not going to use a stock crank or rods on something like this that's blown, a 700 horsepower motor, and you're not going to take a stock motor and put a billet crankshaft in it or titanium rods or something and put $10,000 into something that makes 200 horsepower. It's just way overkill. So it's really, it's not all about price, power, or anything like that. It's about choosing the right components for the specific job that you're doing. You know, I get a lot of calls. People call up, hey Aaron, how much is it for like a 500 horsepower motor? That's really not the question you want to ask. The question you want to ask is, how much is it for a 500 horsepower motor that will withstand its own power? And what I mean by that is, you know, making power is a no-brainer. It's really easy. Um, the problem is, you can make all kinds of power, but the components that's inside the motor might not withstand the power it's making. So, I mean, for instance, I can make 500 horsepower with stock pistons. Mind you, they're, they're domed pistons. It'd be like a 13 or 14 to 1 piston. But we could do it on a stock rod, and the pistons can be cast. We could use stock cast rings, stock bearings, even a stock crank. And guess how long it's going to last? Well, about 11 seconds, and it's going to come apart. So you really need the components that's going to withstand the 500 horsepower, or it's just going to fail on you, and all the money you spend on this just down the tubes. Let me give you a, a scenario on this. Let's take like an 800 horsepower NASCAR motor. You're talking a 40 plus thousand dollar motor. Why is it 40 plus thousand dollars? Well, because of the crank that's in it, the rods, the pistons, basically everything in the rotating assembly. And mind you, the heads are expensive and stuff too, but a lot of the money's in the rotating assembly. Let's take like an 800 horsepower drag motor. That's not a $40,000 motor. It's about probably a $15,000 to $20,000 motor. That's substantially less. Why? Because it's only got to live for seven or eight seconds at a time down the quarter mile. It's just getting short bursts of power. It's not like a NASCAR sitting on a track going 9,500 RPM for three or four hours at a time with millions of dollars of contingency money behind it. It's, it really has to last and withstand. So the price really has nothing to do with the horsepower. It had everything to do with the quality and strength that's in that motor so it can withstand all the rigors and the forces and loads that are on that thing and the RPM and just stresses that are on that so it just keeps going. So let's elaborate a little bit on that about strength, quality, and price with some basic tools because we've all got tools in our toolboxes. Well, look at this uh, typical Phillips screwdriver. This right here is just your cheap 99 cent screwdriver. And of course, if you look at the tip, it's completely worn out. I mean, it's uh, lasted no three or four screws going into some wood and it was over with. If we look at a good quality screwdriver, now this one costs a few dollars, but it's lasted years and years and years. Okay, and it's the next strength up. But the tip is not worn out. I've, I've been using this thing over and over and over. Now let's equate this to crankshafts or rods or pistons. Now the 99 cent screwdriver is like your stock equipment. It's okay, but if you start really torquing on it or anything like that, you just blow the tip off. So you need to go to the next one up. Well, the next one up is a good quality, but guess what? This screwdriver costs a little bit more money, but it lasts a lot longer because it's stronger. Now just so you know, we can go to a really high quality screwdriver. This is one off one of the tool trucks that comes by the shops. And I've had this one for, oh, probably 15 years, and I've used it for everything that you can imagine. I mean, even stuff you're not supposed to use it for, hitting it with a hammer and putting vice grips on it and torquing on it. And guess what? The tip is still just like the day it was when I purchased it. Now, the difference with this is this screwdriver right here costs more than this whole set right here. Okay? This whole set was just a couple of dollars. So what's it worth to you? Is it worth using a stock equipment? and putting a lot of torque to it and having it fail, well that's like having stock components in your engine, putting a lot of horsepower to it like nitrous oxide or a blower or just expecting it to wind up and make a lot of power, guess what's going to happen? Just like this tip, it's going to fail because it's not strong enough to withstand the power that you're putting or the vigors and abuse that you're putting it through. So you upgrade. Well you upgrade to something like this which is equivalent to like an aftermarket crankshaft or aftermarket rods or aftermarket pistons, better stronger pistons. Of course it costs more. Okay, but it's going to withstand better. Then, of course, we go into the high dollar stuff. This thing will take everything you can throw at it and then some, just like billet crankshafts or H-beam rods, 4340 rods and stuff, and super light forged pistons. They're expensive, so is something like this, but you get what you pay for. Let's put this in even more perspective. Let's take a monster motor like this and say, say the head bolt. You're talking about a bolt that's going to take 65, 70 foot-pounds of torque on average, sometimes even a little more. 
Well, if we're going to choose the tool to do that, we're certainly not going to pick like a quarter inch ratchet like this. You just blow the head apart or just bust the socket wide open. Okay, so we have to choose the right tool for the right job. So if we go up to the next one, this is also a good quality wrench, okay? A 3 8 drive and about 60 or 70 foot pounds of torque, that's about the max on this thing before the head starts to break. So this isn't really a good tool for that particular job either, but it will take it for a few times. So let's put this in a more perspective for you to understand that. Let's say someone calls and says, hey Aaron, I want you to build me a 450 horsepower motor and I got $2,500 to spend. It's not very much to put into good quality components to withstand that kind of power. Making it make 450 horsepower is no big deal. I can do that. You put a nitro system on it and on a stock motor and it'll make 450 horse. The problem is it won't be able to withstand that kind of horsepower for very long. It's like this ratchet trying to torque it to 65 or 70 foot pounds all the time. Man, you're asking for this thing to break. You need to go to a stronger unit like that to take that kind of torque. So the same thing, we're going to jump up to something that'll take that kind of torque, a half inch drive. This thing will take 65, 70 foot pounds all day. So on something like in a motor, yeah, 450 horsepower, you need components in it that will withstand that kind of power time and time and time again. Thing is though, the larger, heavier duty wrenches like this cost a little bit more money. In retrospect, we're not going to take something like this and come over here and try and take off a little teeny carburetor bolt. Or we're going to snap the bolt off. Not that a crankshaft, a good strong crank is going to hurt anything inside the motor, but you don't need to spend $1,500 or $2,000 on a wild crankshaft inside of a motor that's going to make 450 horsepower. You don't need to overkill. The trick is spending the right amount of money, getting the right amount of quality, and letting your components to do the job that the engine's designed to do. Surprisingly enough, there's really nothing in the rotating assembly that has a whole lot to do with making horsepower. I know a lot of you are probably going, oh no, no way. Seriously, the only thing in the rotating assembly that has a lot to do with making horsepower obviously is compression and stroke. And little factors like ring friction or piston friction, stuff like that, but really, most of the horsepower comes from the cam and the heads and a given amount of compression. You really buy quality and strength and most of the money that goes in the motor is in the rotating assembly and you're paying for the quality and strength. But it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with power. So when you're choosing components, don't look at the price for how much power you're getting. Look at the price for what kind of quality and strength you're getting and how long it will last through the abuse and vigors that you're going to put it through.